Welcome students to lesson 17 of the Urban World Topic. In this lesson we're going to be focusing on Bristol's economy, the jobs in Bristol. And I'm going to show you how urban change has led to economic opportunities in Bristol. So people's jobs have improved and their lives consequently have improved. Let's find out how. Please write the date, title and learning objective and have a pen and paper ready to learn. Time to review prior learning. Write 1 to 10, answer the questions from memory, and then mark your answers. Game time. Number 1. Cabot Circus is a large shopping centre built in Bristol to meet demand for retail. 2. Ashton Gate is a football stadium built for the Bristol City football team. 3. Every year the Harborside Festival attracts more than 300,000 attendees to listen to music, eat out and party in Bristol Centre. 4. People have migrated to Bristol partly due to its university, e.g. Bristol University. Or you could have said the University of West of England. 5. Technology companies like HP and Uber have set up in Bristol due to the productive workforce. 6. Bristol's old port has been replaced by the Harborside Shopping, Entertainment and Cultural Centre. 7. Due to the British Empire, many people have migrated to the UK for the common language and employment opportunities. 8. The process by which producers create food using sunlight is called photosynthesis. 9. Palm oil is a cash crop grown in Malaysia that is used in more than 400 products worldwide. 10. The second coldest biome, located in the north of Russia and Canada, is called the tundra. Give yourselves a mark out of 10. If you've got 8 or more, excellent work. Any questions that you got wrong, write them down in their answers and then test yourselves on them repeatedly until you know them. Okay, to introduce the idea of an economic opportunity, I'm going to show you a photo and some questions. Look at the photo and use your own understanding to answer the questions and then we'll discuss them. So here are the photos, here are the questions. Number one, what has happened to the UK's quaternary sector? Well, hopefully you said that the UK's quaternary sector has increased. There are more people working in the quaternary or research sector. Two, why are universities important to the UK's economy? You should have said that since the UK's quaternary and tertiary sectors have increased, people are increasingly dependent on an education to be able to fulfill these jobs and work in these companies in order to attract investment and gain an income. And consequently, universities provide a key part of a person's skill sets as they develop on their way to a career. Three, how do people benefit from attending university? As I've explained, University gives people high level skills, for example, research skills, communication skills, standing up on stage and speaking, mathematics skills, presentation skills, other important skills that people only develop in higher education and university. And these advanced skills are very attractive to employers who work in the quaternary and tertiary sector. Computer companies, for example, engineering companies, architecture companies that build uh, skyscrapers. All of these organisations require people with high level skills only gained at university. 4. Recall ways that Nigeria has benefited from better education. So this is where you have to really think back to the development topic. So as you know, Nigeria's education system has improved slightly since 1990. The percent of people attending and completing secondary school has doubled and there are a few more people who are going to university. You should have said that this has benefited Nigeria because it has attracted more investment from abroad as there is an increased productive workforce based on more skilled labour. Consequently, more people in Nigeria can access the jobs provided by TNCs. That is partly why the tertiary sector in Nigeria has grown. In this lesson, we're going to be exploring the economic opportunities in Bristol specifically, created by urban change. 
and I'm going to show you not only how Bristol's economy has changed, but also some specific companies that have arrived, which reflect that economic change. So, let's explore. How have Bristol's changes created economic opportunities? In 1900, we said that Bristol's economy, as with much of the UK, was largely taken up by the secondary sector. Bristol had many factories, especially in the centre of the city, based on products like tobacco and textiles and steel building. The primary sector was the second largest, followed by the tertiary sector. This meant that there were much fewer people who were educated, who could fulfil roles in the tertiary sector or the quaternary sector, which isn't even shown here. Over time, however, due to various forces that we've discussed in previous lessons, but the overriding force being deindustrialization and investment in education and in services, Bristol's economy changed to one heavily dominated by the tertiary sector. Manufacturing shrank, and the quaternary sector, boosted by investment in Bristol University, which led to high-skilled people inventing new technologies, grew. This economic story of change led to profound, which means important, changes in the kinds of businesses that operate in Bristol. For example, this is a Chinook, a military helicopter that the Royal Air Force, Britain's military wing, uses. It had used it significantly in the wars in Afghanistan and Iraq to move soldiers around. And the key components and parts for this helicopter are sourced by a military organisation located in the north of Bristol. Britain's military branch of government is called the Ministry of Defence. And the organisation that is part of the military Ministry of Defence that acquires the equipment needed to construct helicopters is called the Defence Equipment and Support Agency, the DES. Now the DES is the Royal Air Force's main body that acquires weapons and military equipment from around the world. And this is done in Bristol because it requires highly skilled people to be able to develop and choose the right technologies that the British Armed Forces will use. For instance, to understand what kind of helicopter is needed in a desert or in a tropical rainforest requires people who fully understand the technology. And that comes from people who have engineering degrees at university. And those skills are acquired at Bristol University amongst others. Consequently, the Defence Equipment and Support Agency, DES Agency, has been set up in north of Bristol to fulfil that important role. It provides more than 800 permanent jobs to highly skilled people, and it creates a multiplier effect. Here's how. Other military companies, private companies, that develop and manufacture military weapons, such as missiles and helicopters, have also set up around the DES agency to be able to sell their goods to the British military. That is one example of an economic opportunity created by economic change in Bristol. It's not, not the only one. The aerospace industry, one of the most important and profitable industries in the world, has an important building and office base in Bristol. Airbus is one of the most important aerospace manufacturing companies in the world, along with Boeing, an American company. Airbus is a French company mostly. And one of its main research facilities is located in the north of Bristol. Why? Bristol University is one of the leaders in engineering out of any university in the world. The students develop the skills in robotics, in things like physics, and in aerodynamics, and so understand what it takes to develop an aircraft. And consequently, Airbus has set up a research office in the north of Bristol because it knows that there are enough people who have the skills to provide the roles that it needs to be able to develop the best aeroplanes and compete with Boeing for selling aeroplanes around the world. And finally, the BBC, which is the British government's 
entertainment and news and information organization produces many documentaries. You may have watched David Attenborough's documentaries. You may have watched other documentaries about many, many different topics. A quarter of all the BBC's documentaries are filmed, edited and researched in Bristol. Why? Again, it's because of Bristol University, which has a significant media department that trains its students in not only filmmaking and editing, but also in subjects like geography, wherein they know about the natural environment and the natural world, and so have an understanding of the locations where different shots can be taken to find different animals or get different results. And consequently, one of the BBC's main studios is located in the north of Bristol, in this cluster, which means this group, of businesses in the creative sector. Another company that works in the creative sector is called Ardman Animations. You may have heard of Wallace and Gromit. Ardman Animations, spelt A-A-R-D-M-A-N, uses a technique called stop motion, which is lots of photos stitched together to create videos. Wallace and Gromit, the most famous project of Ardman Animations, is created entirely in Bristol. So what are the benefits of the city from the arrival of these industries? An industry is a group of companies that work in a particular kind of product. So the military industry are private companies that work in making military technologies. The aerospace industry is the group of companies that work in making all technologies relating to aeroplanes. And finally, the creative industry is all, all the companies that relate to filmmaking and arts and other such things that, in, that are of that theme. How have the arrival of these industries benefited the city of Bristol? Well, as you will have noticed, all of these industries are in the tertiary of the quaternary sector, research of new aeroplanes, acquisition and research of new military technologies, filmmaking. These are high skilled jobs. You can't just walk off the street and get a job in these companies. You need to go to university and then you need to train beyond that and get lots of experience, for example, apprenticeships. And since Bristol has a very high number of these kinds of companies, its incomes have risen significantly. Bristol's GDP per capita is one of the highest in the UK as a result of the investment of these organizations. Not only that, but the arrival of these companies has led to the startup of many smaller companies to meet the demand. For instance, as I explained with the military, Ministry of Defense, other military companies have set up there. But on a smaller scale, delivery and transport companies have set up to meet the demands of Airbus, for example, for wiring and smaller technologies that are needed for planes. And for BBC Films, camera making companies have set up here as well as electronics companies. This is the multiplier effect, and it has occurred because of the arrival of these very big companies in Bristol. And finally, when a big company sets up in a place, other companies follow, because other companies think that there's a big chance of making a profit. The only reason a big company was set up in a place is if it thinks it's going to make a profit. And so if Airbus sets up in Bristol, other aerospace companies follow. They think they'll make a profit, and they're right. And when a big company sets up in Bristol, that also signifies that there are lots of productive people, highly skilled people, that will be able to fill the jobs that a new company needs when it sets up. So, not only do companies set up in Bristol, but they also give money. Lots of banks from around the world loan money to Bristol's companies to be able to start up because it believes that they will be successful. One Bristol company from Bristol University is a robotics company inventing new robots that can go through sewer systems and detect cracks and weaknesses before they explode and therefore people can repair them before the sewage line is damaged, contaminating water supplies. Government investment in this company has meant that this company has become much bigger and more able to research its robots. This is the story of how urban change, economic change, has created these economic opportunities and how these opportunities have led to benefits for the city of Bristol. Time to assess learning. Question one. 
why has the tobacco factory changed into the tobacco factory theatre today? Well, you should have said that demand for tobacco, number one, in Britain has declined, manufacturing in Britain has declined, and because of the rise of young educated people, the social demand for entertainment, such as in theatres, has risen as well. Not only that, the growth of the creative sector in Bristol means that there are more theatre companies who are able to provide such entertainment. What technologies have spurred the growth of the quaternary sector in Bristol? You should have said that the quaternary sector is heavily dependent on computer technology. Computers help people to do calculations and research new technologies and work out solutions to problems much faster than ever before. And so the computer is one of the main reasons why Bristol's quaternary sector has grown. As in Cambridge Science Park, for example, and quaternary sectors in HICs all around the world. Question three. Suggest why the arrival of high-tech companies and high-skill companies in Bristol can create inequality. Well, you should have said that much as in Rio de Janeiro, where people in the favelas can't access high-skill jobs, the people in Bristol who lack a formal education at university are unable to tap into the opportunities created by these high-tech companies. They don't have the skills for those jobs, and consequently their incomes remain much lower than the people who do get those jobs, creating inequality. Okay, time to embed learning. Please read the questions, answer them using your understanding, and then mark your answers. So number one, the changes. Describe them. You need to give me the overall pattern and specific numbers. Question two. Two causes. Make sure you have both these causes explained clearly. So say, it led to, that's an important explanatory phrase, it led to, this happened because. Three, explain how investment education has contributed to the new industries. Both points needed, explain them clearly, as I have. And four, explain two ways that the emergence of new industries in Bristol has created economic benefits for the city. Any two of these points. Try and use the key phrases that I have as well. Give yourselves a mark out of the total. Correct any errors in green pen, add any parts that you missed in green pen as well. Doing this will ensure that you improve the next time you visit these questions. To make sure that you really understand how to answer these questions, I strongly recommend you come back to them repeatedly in a week's time and test yourselves on them again from memory. From this lesson, write two questions. Answer them from memory and then test yourselves in a week's time on them. In the next lesson, we're going to be looking at the environmental benefits of urban change in Bristol. Why would you want to park over a road? Think about that. Join me then.